Today is November 17th. It is officially the first day of our fifth year on this property. 2017, we moved here, basically had sold all of our stuff, kept only what we needed, got ourselves a shipping container, moved into a little trailer off grid here, and uh, been here for exactly four years now, starting on our fifth year today. It's beautiful fall today. It's about the same weather as it was the day we moved here. It's about 65, gonna be almost 70 degrees today. Weird for November, but I remember that year, and you may as well if you watch our channel. It was nice and warm for a couple months, well, through December, and then the freeze hit, and we got hosed by a week-long below temperature freezing, uh, below freezing temperatures, I mean, and uh, ended up breaking all of our plumbing and had a lot of problems with pipes and water and power. So that was like our whole first year basically was learning how to survive in an off-grid situation out here in the middle of basically nowhere. We've come a long way in four years. We're almost finished building a home and uh, I'm still putting in cabinets, but I anticipate another couple months will be a lot different scenario than it was four years ago, November 17th, 2017. So today I'm gonna to start building on an island for the kitchen, get that put together, and hopefully we can call the cabinets finished and move on to the things that we need to finish like stairs and the outside of the porch, maybe flooring, put some sinks in, all the final touches of getting this place ready to move into. Today's episode is sponsored by Ariat. We appreciate their support. Let's go do some work. A lot of people have been uh, interested in seeing how this island is going to turn out in our kitchen. Uh, we have a lot of beautiful cherry cabinets made that kind of coordinates with the white of the perimeter cabinets. So this video, I'm going to lay out all these base cabinets. I've got a, a drawing on the floor kind of marked out uh, from a long time ago. Uh, this is a four by 10 island and we'll have three pendant lights above that kind of light up the the other side where you sit this side's where you work it's all flat one surface but we've got uh, some cool finished end panels that help make it look, look a little like furniture got some pull out trays for big fat pots and this is the main work center uh, prep area of the kitchen and uh, so i'm going to start laying this out and then we're going to draw a line around the whole thing pull it up pull everything back off and then we're going to fasten down a bunch of two by fours as blocking so that when we lay it, set it down over, we can have something to fasten to. Then I have to run power up into here because we have a special rail, like a two and a half inch fat rail top on the center cabinet from this work side uh, that is for putting a power strip there that'll hide up under the countertop so we don't have any exposed outlets on the finished side of the cabinets. So things just got a lot smaller in this house. I knew this was going to make things smaller. Everything looked big before, but I got this generally laid out. So here's the seating area. Now these are finished ends and the flush toe on the front. So it's more furniture like. And then once this is all installed, we'll put a, a finished panel here. So it's all like furniture. Same thing here, flush toe. This is a little door cabinet. One on the other side, little door cabinet. And that's the sitting side. So on the work side, this will have a, another applied panel and then like false doors to make it look like raised panel wainscot type fun. Uh, that is a door cabinet, and it's got that style that goes all the way to the floor, kind of gives it a finished look, and that'll help kind of tie in that flush to the bottom panel look. Three drawers, and then our 
big double door with pull out trays and that's the top rail that's fatter that I was talking about where I'm going to put the power. Another bank of three drawers and then another set of doors with the other side um, where the style goes to the floor. So that'll have a nice toe kick underneath where you're working. Uh, the sides don't have a toe kick because it's more like a piece of furniture. So I've been messing around here looking at the lines I had drawn on the floor and comparing it to what we actually have. So I got the laser set back up. I love lasers. Uh, I think I've decided I'm going to line up this face with the right side of that oven cabinet. Pull everything in a little bit because we got lots of room in here and that's what I wanted to make sure when you had, so you could have like these doors open and these doors open and you could walk in between without worrying about hitting anything. But I have actually over five and a half feet there. Um, I, I looked up the fridge and the depth when the door is open, it, it doesn't stick out very far at all because it's a double door, it's a French door fridge. So there's plenty of room in here. And uh, over there, when you come up out of the basement, there's room, but it's pretty tight. So I think, yeah, that's pretty tight. So if I move everything that way just a little and line the, like I said, line that up more with the right side of that oven cabinet, that's probably going to work better. And uh, then this side won't quite stick out into this hallway or aisle quite as bad. And in fact, the front of that cabinet might line up better with the wall. So I'm going to mess around with this a little bit and tweak the layout and then get the boss up here thing, see what she says, and then we'll get it locked down. But check out this laser, man. That is right on everywhere splits the beam right there at the right side of that oven and then we're right there at the top so if I can get this right here lined up with that laser we know we'll be dead on when I shot the opening clip to this video it was 65 to 70 degrees out uh, November 17th and today is not November 17th and it's not 65 to 70 degrees out, it's actually about 27 degrees out. So I thought I'd take a little moment and tell you about my new favorite winter work wear wardrobe items from Ariat. Um, this, I've talked about before, is my new favorite overshirt, which is a, their rebar flannel. Just a simple flannel shirt, except it's nice and heavy and really soft and super comfortable. Love it. Winter coats, if you're looking for winter coats this season, here are the two best winter coats I've ever had. This one is the Valiant Ripstop. It's a lightweight ripstop fabric with the puffy warm stuff inside. And they have the cuffs on the sleeves to keep the screaming cold air out when you're cruising down the trail on your four wheeler. I like it because it's super lightweight and twice as warm as, well, the other heavy, heavy brands that I used to wear. And plenty of pockets. Just, a, it's probably my favorite of the two here. This is the other one. I haven't even kind of tried this one yet. This is similar, but it has a hood, same pockets, same uh, warm lining inside, and uh, actually has better sleeve cuffs, tighter uh, sleeve cuffs inside, but it's a heavier Dura canvas. So this is the ripstop, this is the Dura canvas. Both have the chest pockets, which are deep, and both have an inside pocket. So if you are looking for a new warm winter coat this year for you or a loved one, check these two out. I'll leave a link to our favorites in the description below, but area definitely makes good stuff. I'm gonna go outside and check on the deer stands. All right, I pulled this forward. It's perfectly in line with the oven now. And then we moved it this way so that this is perfectly in line with the fridge and it just flows perfect. So I think that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna lock this down. I'm gonna lay out the lines and then we'll go about getting all these set. So I had everything clipped together 
everything leveled out, and I was able to make a mark and trace everywhere. And uh, I got this moved. I'm gonna start with the center cabinet and uh, put some blocking. You can see this little mark here. This is the face line, so I gotta go back a half inch, and that's the corner edge. So I gotta go in a quarter inch, or in a half inch there. I'm gonna put four inch blocks in each corner. There's my four inch blocks that I cut. So I'm gonna go ahead and nail those blocks to the floor and they'll sit inside the base of the cabinet. I'm just gonna lean these back and get my blocks laid out on the floor. All right. I may end up having to lift these and set them down over the blocks, but that's all right. I'm trying to get it to where we're gonna have enough meat to nail the cabinet. Get this one going there. All right, I think the blocks are ready. Quick shout out to Northern Tool for hooking us up with this new Milwaukee 15 gauge finish nailer. Been needing one of these for a while. Uh, the, my DeWalt quit working, the seal's blue, and I haven't had time to fix it, so they were kind enough to let us try this one out. I'm gonna use some, uh, I think these are two and a half inch 15 gauge nails. This is a uh, single action, not blinking. Bump action, blinking. Works good. And no cords. All right. Let's try bump action. Oops. Yeah, that works. That works really good. Family owned and operated and celebrating their 40th anniversary this year, Northern Tool and Equipment has 120 stores across the country and everything online at northerntool.com. They're a great place to gear up. They serve hardworking pros and serious DIYers across auto shops, construction, welders, farmers, landscapers, and more. Northern Tool provides quality tools for serious work. They also provide expert parts, service, and repair teams in all stores who can get your equipment tuned up and running right. Check them out, northerntool.com. Milwaukee 15 gauge finish nailer. Freaking awesome. This thing is a game changer. Well, apparently Lowe's has started to farm out their delivery drivers to a third party, a third party company to deliver all their appliances so they don't deliver them themselves anymore. And I waited here till like nine o'clock last night, waiting on our washer dryer. They never showed up. I called, they said, yeah, they're on their way. Never showed up. The guy from Lowe's called me this morning and he's like, man, we're sorry. We, they brought back like five other deliveries and nobody got their stuff. I'm like, well, you guys uh, really lost your freaking mojo. And uh, he's, he apologized and all that and they're gonna bring it like tomorrow or something. But be aware if uh, you order appliances or anything this holiday season from Lowe's, you may or may not get them. Okay, face frames are fastened together. Cool thing about this little cabinet run is that you can put the screw in the drawer cabinets. So screw from there that way and there that way. And so that fastens those three together and you don't see a screw if you open the doors. Same thing there, screwing that way and that way and that way and that way. No exposed fasteners anywhere that there is a door to open. So this is what we have going on. I countersink it. It's like a two and a half inch cabinet uh, finished trim head screw. 
and I drill it with a tapered bit. I don't have the countersink bit on it because it takes up too much of the shank of the bit and it doesn't go deep enough so I have to keep swapping it out with the little uh, baby countersink which is a little annoying but I gotta work with what I got. So that bit length is exactly the length I need for the screw, but there's no extra room for the countersink, so I have to do that part separate. Not a big deal. Zipped it in and it's done. This daylight savings time is really being a pain in the butt. It's like five o'clock and it's almost freaking dark. You can see the sun setting out there, which is pretty, but running out of daylight. Anyway, this thing is turning out to be quite beautiful. I love it. So the doors here, the doors here are on. Then you'll have a little seating area. It's got some door right there. It's basically a shelf cabinet. Here's the working side, doors on and drawers in. I find that it's easier to do all this if you put your doors on first, then you can figure out your drawer front spacing, make sure all your reveals are good. Uh, so the drawers between those two doors will have the same reveals and they'll be much easier to do with the doors on. Now here is a unique little uh, system. I didn't really understand what the heck I was doing here and I had to look up the video of how to do it, which was on cabinet joint and explained everything perfectly. This cabinet is for two pull-out drawers, or I mean trays, uh, those pull-out trays. So you can put like big pots and pans and whatever you want on it. Uh, but it was like, how do you make this work? It's basically a drawer and a shelf all in one. So you can adjust the shelves or pull out trays with height, you know, the height of the shelves, but it's also a drawer. And it uses the regular tandem bloom, uh, bloom tandem drawer slide thingies. But they give you this, these pieces of hard maple cut notched like that. And there's a little tiny rabbit right there that they cut out so that the tab behind that little hinge part fits right in there perfectly. So that you can put that in there just like that. I pre-drilled and put three screws in there. Um, and then that, at the back, you put like that with the little teeth facing the wall. So here the teeth face the back of the cabinet. There the teeth face the wall. And you do that on both sides. And that gives you your adjustable spaces uh, where you put your slides. Now, how does that work? Well, they give you these four more pieces. And they have a little cutout notch deal on one end. And I haven't done this yet, but I'm about to. Basically, you mount your drawer slide to this piece and then it goes into those notches in the cabinet. So I'm gonna put this on and do a couple and then I'll show you how it works. Okay, I mounted the pieces of wood they give you to the drawer slides with three screws. There, there, and there. Now we're going to put these into here. So back there, you put this little tab into the tooth hole thingy. Push it in. Get that in there. Get 
I mean, that's pretty freaking cool. That's how that works. All right, well, do the other ones and see if everything fits. Oh, look at that. Wow. I mean, that's clever as hell. All that's left is six drawer fronts, and I gotta pull power. I'm gonna pull a wire up in between these two cabinets, and then make it come into the cabinet here so that I can put my power strip in this space here. Well, I'm pretty happy with how this all turned out. It didn't take as long as I expected. It was a little tedious getting everything lined up and put, uh, the blocking and everything so we could get it fastened to the floor, but uh, doors and drawers, the more you do them, the easier they get, it seems. And I really like doing the drawer fronts after I get the doors on because it lets me do all the reveals. And you may have noticed I completely forego went away with the whole uh, gluing the drawer front to the door box. Um, I just started lining everything up and putting screws in it and uh, because the hardware I'm using is super solid, doesn't need to be glued. And uh, everything turned out great. So I'm going to now pull power. I got to pull wire up through here so that we can do a power strip here. And I've got that ordered. And then I have to put applied panels on the end skins here. I don't know, yeah, you should be able to see this. Uh, this is just bare plywood. Uh, we have a panel that goes here of finished quarter inch, and then we're going to put applied doors. So it looks more like a furniture cabinet. Um, so I'm going to work on that. I might do the applied doors on those end cabinets there. And that's probably going to do it for this one. Uh, thanks to Ariat again for sponsoring today's episode. Thanks to Northern Tool for helping us out with all of our tools. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Appreciate you watching. See you next time.